Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I would like to talk just a little bit about this fern here. This is a rabbit's foot fern and the scientific name for this little beauty is Humata tyermanii and I'll include the scientific name, the spelling of the scientific name at the bottom of the screen. And before I go into telling you all about how I care for this plant, where I have it situated, how much water I give it, um, when I fertilize, my general care that I provide for this plant, I'm going to read a little bit from this website. And I really like this website. Uh, I tend to visit this site when I am looking for information on other plants as well. And I have cross-referenced this site with a couple of different other sites as well. And all of the information is basically the same, but some of the other information that I have found on other websites are kind of, the information is kind of just compiled into this article. So it's basically all included in this article as well and some general information on this plant. The Devalia genus of ferns includes about three dozen species of ferns that all share a quirky and kind of delightful trait. They all grow from creeping rhizomes that are fuzzy and covered with a fine fur-like mat of hairs. This fuzzy rhizome has earned the Devalia species their common names, deer's foot ferns, squirrel's foot ferns, rabbit's foot ferns, among others. The idea is that the fuzzy ground level rhizomes resemble animal feet. In their native habitat, these ferns are often epiphytic, which explains their creeping rhizomes. In indoor cultivation, they are frequently grown as hanging plants or long-term potted plants. Although the rhizomes do extend below the surface of the soil, they should never be buried. These roots serve something of the same function as orchid roots, they cling to surfaces and draw moisture and nutrients from the air and environment. Instead, let the rhizomes grow uncontrolled until they cascade from the container and add a cool visual note to your fern. So as these guys get bigger, the rhizomes, and I'll show you more towards the end of the video what they look like, the rhizomes on my plant aren't very pronounced yet because it still is juvenile. I've only had this fern for about, I'd say eight months or so. But again, I'll show you what those rhizomes look like towards the end of the video. And once the plant does mature, the rhizomes will actually extend over the pot. And that's basically where they got their name from because of the fuzzy little rhizomes that resemble um, rabbit's feet, squirrel's feet, deer's feet, etc. Okay, so the growing conditions. The growing conditions for this fern, light. These are shade loving or at the very least shade tolerant plants. Indoors, a north facing or east facing window would be ideal. Never expose them to direct sunlight unless they've been carefully acclimated. They can also be grown well under artificial lights. Water, these ferns love humidity and will require both frequent watering and misting. It's important not to let the rhizomes dry out, which will weaken and possibly kill the plants. The best looking plants are grown in conditions similar to many ivies. Soil, they like a loamy rich soil with plenty of peat. Drainage is not a paramount concern although they dislike being waterlogged. Fertilizer. Feed with a weak liquid fertilizer throughout the growing season. Propagation. Along with clumping ferns, the Devalia are relatively easy to propagate. You can propagate from spores, but it's just as easy to divide the underground rhizome and split your fern into potting up each half into a new container. It's best to perform this operation on older plants so you can get the most viable rhizome possible. Repotting. These do not need frequent repotting and in fact should be encouraged to overgrow their pots a little bit. This is especially true for hanging plants 
which look better when they cascade slightly and their unique rhizomes are visibly protruding from the container. For best growth, repot every other year. Varieties. The Devalia genus is interesting throughout, but unfortunately only a few species are regularly found in cultivation. These include the deer's foot fern, the squirrel's foot fern, and the rabbit's foot fern. Most of the species stay relatively small with triangular fronds that measure about 12 to 18 inches in length and have airy, feathery foliage. The more delicate varieties require more water than their thicker cousins. Grower's tips, and this will be the end of the article. Growing these plants well requires a somewhat careful touch. They have to be given ample water to thrive, including daily misting of the rhizome or a really humid room. But they also do best when certain common things, such as repotting and heavy fertilizing, are neglected a little bit. In general, they dislike being disturbed much, and once you've found a good home for one, it will not react well to changing conditions. Also be aware that these plants are very sensitive to accumulated fertilizer salts, okay? In part because of their rhizomes. Make sure to flush the soil very well at least once a year, and then soak the root ball to clean out fertilizer. Grow them in mossy baskets for a truly prehistoric look. Devalia are vulnerable to pests, including aphids, mealybugs, scale, and whiteflies. If possible, identify the infestation as early as possible and treat with the least toxic option. So that was just a quick little article, and I found that article helpful. Now, as far as my plant, I have this plant in a terracotta pot, which probably isn't ideal, um, it may benefit better from maybe a ceramic pot or a plastic pot, but mine seems to be doing well in this terracotta pot. I've had it for about eight months and I haven't had any issues. Now, as far as soil uh, mixture for this plant, I have it in my typical mixture, which doesn't really lean towards a more dense soil or an airy soil. It's kind of just in the middle. It's my typical mixture that I always use. It is a um, about two thirds of a regular potting mix with amendments added in as well. Now with some of my other airy plants, I do like to add more perlite and orchid bark, but this is just a general mixture that I use for most of my plants and it's doing well. As far as watering, because my plant is in a terracotta pot, I do have to water this plant about every four to five days or so. I just watered it. I brought it out to my sink and I sprayed it down with my little uh, sink sprayer. And usually every week to two weeks, I'll bring it out into the kitchen and I will spray it down. Fertilizer, the fertilizer that I use is uh, a fish fertilizer, a fish emulsion. Sometimes I use an Osmo coat um, just the little pellets, you know, put those in there. I have also used the job sticks as well. So I purchased this plant, I think it was around September of last year, and I don't think I fertilized this plant. I did fertilize it this season, uh, just last month with a fish fertilizer. The fish fertilizer, although it does not smell the greatest, I think it is a very good fertilizer because I haven't had any issues with any of my plants burning. Um, and like I've said, I've also used the Osmocote fertilizer as well, and all of my plants seem to do well with the Osmocote and also the Job sticks. The one fertilizer that my plants don't seem to do well with is the Miracle Grow. I can't remember the name of it. I've got it in the back room, but it's it's in the yellow bottle, and it's basically just a synthetic liquid fertilizer and I don't use that on my plants anymore or at least I haven't in a long time because when I did a couple of years ago it did seem to burn the leaves on some of my plants so I don't use that. So that is fertilization for this plant. Um, as far as where I have this plant located, my plant sits in my sunroom. It sits about 10 feet away from a west facing window and also a north facing window. So I don't have it in any direct light 
It basically gets just diffuse light because it does sit back a little bit further. And also outside of my west facing window, we have another sun porch, an outside sun porch. So that also blocks some of the sunlight as well. So it does not get any direct sun um, because if these plants do get direct sun, it will burn the fronds. Okay, so I am going to turn my camera around so that I can show you what the rhizomes on this plant look like. Really neat looking. Um, again, mine aren't very pronounced yet because it's still a, it's still an immature plant, but they are starting to grow and they're super cute. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you what they look like. Guys, so we are going to get all up in this plant's business. As far as what the rhizomes look like. Right there are some, just the beginnings. And look at these little fronds. This is the other side of the plants. Let me see what we have from, there's one. Okay, so there's one of the little rhizomes. Come on, focus. And I think we can see some over there as well. So I am really enjoying this fern. I purchased this one specifically, guys, for the rhizomes because I can't wait until the rhizomes mature and start trailing over the side of the pot. Okay, guys, that is it for today's houseplant spotlight. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really am enjoying this fern right now. Super easy to care for. I have not had any problems with it. I haven't experienced any drying fronds. I don't have any extra humidity in my home. I do have a dehumidifier in the basement that's set at about 55%. And so I'm expecting that the humidity in the rest of my house is about 60. And I have not experienced any problems whatsoever with this fern. So definitely an easy one to care for if you're looking to um, try out having a fern or two. I would say definitely try this one. Super easy to care for and I'm really enjoying it. Okay guys, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy the content of my videos, please subscribe and also hit the little gray bell so that you'll be notified of any new videos that I post. Okay guys, have a great day and I will see you next time.